Our topic today is the confusing times we live in. Uh, we we started out and we were having uh, we released our last video about Operation Backyard Brawl, and uh, between this video and the release of our last video, or the, this video and the last video, there's been information that has come out that kind of puts into question what's been happening with this whole organization, uh, the Veterans on Patrol. Uh, so we wanted to discuss just how these, uh, how we get into these confusing things where there is hope people seem to be doing something good, but then there's also like, how do we know that they're doing good? And yeah, and it comes down to um, how do we know in general? Um, and what do we mean by we know something? And so if you can determine whether an idea is good, um, you might be able to find what's true. Uh, and so we wanted to talk a little bit about um, these confusing times that we live in and how to sort out uh, you so, know, what's true despite the confusion. What we found <clears throat> that in order to navigate the confusion, confusion that we're constantly presented with, you know, what's good and what's bad and what's you know, right or wrong, it, all of these questions have oftentimes very complex, uh, very complex answers. Uh, just the other day, a friend of mine said they kind of pined for the days when things were simple, when, you know, bad people were bad, Nazis were the evil ones, right? And they were, <laughs> they were okay. Indiana Jones, right? Killing the Nazis. <laughs> He was the good guy, and the Nazis were the evil guy, and they kicked puppies, and <laughs> you know, easy. Uh, yeah, the 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 white, the, you know, the good guys wore white, yeah, and the, the bad guys wore black in the westerns. Yep, the, yeah, yeah, the white hat cowboy and the black hat villain, right? <laughs> well, I've, what I find interesting about all of that is that the simplicity was actually a fabrication. Of the reality, the right. reality is uh, necessarily a murky sort of thing. Right. It's always been, you know, morally gray. The the it's just nowadays we ha have more vision, more insight into what's happening. Right. There is there is what's <clears throat> actually happening. You're no longer merely separated into your own small little group. Yeah, but by morally gray, we don't mean that there isn't morally black and moral, mor you know, moral black and white. Um, it's just maybe harder to to get a hold of it. Well, I think what I'm saying by morally gray, it's that uh, there's always reasons for for people to do what they do, but the actions that they take, we can separate and judge from the person whether or not they are good actions or bad actions. But to take a, a person as a cohesive whole, it's rare that you're going to find a person that does all good or all bad. Yeah. And, and we've seen this as an evolution even of our, even of like popular culture and media where it's no longer satisfactory to have a villain that is the mustachioed, twirling, you know, guy who is kicking drowning kittens in his bathtub because he he likes it i guess you know that's a very villains. Rare, yeah just strict <laughs> villains or strict good guys who can never do anything wrong and everything is perfect for them mm. we we understand our i think our culture and it's a, a good thing that our culture understands that it is no longer it has never been Reality isn't like that, and reality reality is yeah, well. Yeah, I think that's emerging right now. This this we're being through the complexities. I I lost you there for a second, Ryan. Could you respeak? I don't know if you got that. Uh, I cut out a little bit. Yeah, you cut out a little bit. 
but we're, I'm saying we're more receptive now to this, the complexities of the situation. So actually, that's the thing that I wanted to, to talk about right. is how do you chart a, a course through the chaos? Yeah. Um, and so I wanted to start out with a description of the problem, um, which is basically what's the – why is truth-seeking counterintuitive? I don't know. Why is truth seeking counterintuitive? <laughs> I mean, what happens? Intuitive in a sense that you you want to find the truth, but by doing so directly, it has a way of getting um, slowing the process down. It, it makes it harder to find the truth if you're uh, trying to hit it directly, and the. The, the main problem with that is this idea uh, of foundationalism. It's this idea that once you've found something that looks true, you set it into your foundation. You treat it like it were some sort of bedrock that it's, you know, something you don't need to revisit. You got that. You got that piece of truth. And it's it's forever going to be like that. It's certain. Um, yeah, but and and this is actually uh, a long r running um, misconception about how we obtain truth, um, and it's so long running that it's there's there. Are, this concept of foundationalism is embedded in the in the most common definition of knowledge. Uh, the most common that I've heard of is justified true belief. And the justification part of that is the, is, is the part where foundationalism uh, comes through. So just when something is justified, you're measuring it against something that, um, that is in your foundation. That is uh, some sort of touchstone of truth, so to speak, um, and how it stands in relation to that touchstone. So if it stands very solidly and right next to that touchstone of truth, you can sort of feel better that you have something that's more likely to be true. And all of this is just just a misconception as I'm... I I don't As know. I'm, I would say this that, is basically what I want to talk about. Well, justification, <clears throat> not not to derail you entirely, but justification, as I understand it, is more about the idea that you are justified in believing what you believe, right? So, yeah. And and for that, what yeah. you're saying is that um, you're justified in believing what you believe, so long as you it fits into a foundation of already known truths. Right. Yes. I see. Okay. Yeah, you're piling up truths, facts, and things that you've checked, um, pieces of evidence, um, so, so you know, how, so adages we... that wise wise people have said. <laughs> so how can we uh, how can we <clears throat> resolve this? How can we how can we shy away from? Uh... Well, hold on a second. Mm -hmm. But before we get to the resolution, the 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 problem with foundation and foundationalism is that all of these things are fallible. We are fallible. Um, we can be wrong. These ideas can be wrong, even if they get through our filters. Even there's no such thing as the greatest filter that that is entirely impervious to error. Um, you can't prevent error perfectly. So your foundation is not something that is, in, you know, protected from error completely. So there's, there's always the chance that you might get a bad egg in there. And that bad egg actually might be so key, so fundamental to your worldview that it would change it 180 if it were wrong. And that's a serious, serious thing. That, that means your whole... If your foundation is potentially shaky like that, then your whole house of cards is ready to fall down. 
And this is kind of the problem we're, we're in these days. This is where the confusion is coming from. And this is, this is the, everyone's getting a sense of unease because they're start, we're starting to feel the tremors ripple through our house of cards. Their, their worldview is starting to shake. They're, yeah. It's not the same world that they're used to. Yeah, so foundationalism is a, is a very common and very dangerous misconception about how we get knowledge. So what I wanted to do is talk about what you do instead, um, because I don't want to leave people without any sort of like foundation. There is, you know, like I'm, I'm literally pulling the rug, rug from out from underneath people's house of cards. Right. Cards, but the the solution to it is instead of exactly ser- searching for truth directly, what you want to do is search for better explanations, and if by in so doing that you will acquire explanations that better align with the truth that contain bigger grains of truth. If that makes sense, you acquire truth as a side effect of searching for better explanations. If you if you do not search for truth at all whatsoever, um, you're less inclined to uh, put it in a pile of truths. Well, I think what you mean, what you're saying, what you mean to say is that uh, the foundation shouldn't be based on truth but should instead be based on explanations. And from those explanations... No, not really. I mean, I I would say that you don't want a foundation at all, really. Let You know, it's just too too much of a liability. And what what you should have is basically a... a, um, an explanation that you take seriously repeatedly. And if you take seriously this explanation, despite genuine efforts to, to find problems with it, and you, you still, you know, take this explanation seriously, then you're, uh, you know, over many years, you will, that, that will kind of become your, your worldview. Uh, that it's not really a foundation. It's just kind of like, if it's, the bigger the and broader reaching the explanation, the more of a worldview it is. <clears throat> you know, so so what I'm saying is that um, you can take seriously ideas that you don't know are true. It's entirely possible. Hmm. So ideas are always possibly wrong. You don't know when they're right or wrong. And that means there is there is no such thing as a reliable source of information. Uh, and we got in this trap of looking to better sources of information over other sources. Looking for so, looking for the source rather than the idea, rather than exactly. the expl- explanation. Yeah, that's what you're saying. So, yeah, so you're looking at the explanatory value or structure of of the source so what is the content of what they say and how well does it line up with other things you know so if you have this big set of ideas that is well constrained with all the other ideas you know then you have a better guess a better explanation or explanatory guess conjecture is another word for it so and that's actually what we're looking for we're looking for highly constrained guesses not because they're more likely to be true or more probable but because they're just better guesses if they're better constrained they're more valuable now they could be wrong but you do, I mean, you're not going to know if they're wrong um, to any sort of certainty unless you're omniscient. And that's a real problem um, from the perspective of truth-seeking. Right. But so, from the perspective of 
seeking better guesses, it's not a problem at all. Because you can tell if a guess is good in an objective way uh, without knowing everything. And that's actually, that's actually doable. You can do that. Yeah, I, I think I think it's uh it's invaluable to be able to uh di- to not necessarily rely on truth which can often be so shaky and uncertain but in, instead to rely on the value of the ideas that arrive to that truth yep so anyway yeah, so I mean we've had talk, we've had talks about Operation Backyard Brawl um, is being they have a high enough profile now since they hit critical mass last weekend um, that they're attracting the attention of a lot of people, and that, of course, includes people who want to um, obstruct. And so you're seeing smear campaigns already. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but that shouldn't matter because it the things that they're doing are more valuable than the uh, whatever their past was, right? The yeah. skepticism of whether or not they're good people shouldn't necessarily matter in this case yep. because what they're attempting to do and what they have already done, uh, both are valuable. Yep. Anyway, I think I think we better wrap this up. We're already... You know, well over what we try to hit for, but that always seems to happen, doesn't it? Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, well, as long as we keep it down, we might get less than twenty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll be all right Someday. this time. Someday. <laughs> all right. All right. Okay. So we'll see you next time. See you next time.